Kukla culture of peace. We're very honored to have Dave Manita Roddick today to talk about corporate social responsibility and community trade.
the, the respect and reputation that the body shop now enjoys. Thanks to the notions of business and the robotic has advocated, we now recognize that we exist in the great in the greater context of a world that should respect the earth and all its citizens, men and animals alike. Today we invite fellow members of the business circle and educators from multidisciplinary backgrounds to learn from the expertise and insight of a person who has devoted her entire career to achieve better quality of life as well as to be one of the pioneers for corporate responsibility throughout the world. I would like to take this opportunity to express my sincere praise for the International Peace Foundation which has helped make this wonderful series possible. Once again, May I thank our distinguished speaker for giving her time. I believe I can speak for all members of the audience when I say that we can certainly gather much from the perspective that our speaker is about to share and we are about to hear. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, may I now request the honor of the Chairman of the Board of Directors of the International Peace Foundation, Mr. Uwe Horowitz, to deliver his remark. Very sorry, but it's always difficult to choose the right language. And uh, since I think there are more people, Thai people, ที่จะเล่าให้ทุกท่านพร้อมไม่ขอเสนอภาคแนวคิดเพื่อสังเกตและวิธีการที่จะได้มาซึ่งสัมพันธ์มันแต่ของยังรู้สึกว่าสันติ
and in calities with arms. You see now big oil industries having their own armies. How did I, how did I, how was I protected? How did I come out in the business world with an entirely different viewpoint about how businesses should be run? Well, I think I know the answer. And it goes something like this. Number one, I never went to business school. Number two, I never read a book on economic theory. That helped. Never heard who Milton Friedman was. Never thought that life was any more complicated than love and work. Never, never believed in anything that other than everything in life was subject to change. And I guess finally, not believing that you should take a moisture cream seriously. Those were the sort of the attitudes, the naive attitudes, when I set up my company and some 80, 28 years ago. And I also say that what you bring to your company or your business or your enterprise or your livelihood is yourself. It's your DNA. It's what, and that's what we all are. We're all here together. You know, we can look at the whole geography of the map of our lives and the geography of our lives. And we're all imprinted on people who have affected you or places you've been. And I guess my geography, my map started you know, being an immigrant child in, you know, the early 40s, you know, 50s. And when you're an immigrant, you're never the same as anybody else. You know, you don't dance to the same drum beat. You're different. If you're an immigrant, you have a work ethic. If you're an immigrant, you don't see things in a different way. And every one of us who are immigrants, whether we're Jewish immigrants in Europe or whether we're Italian immigrants in America or Pakistani or Indian immigrants in England, we, all of us are different and we felt different as a child. And if we're lucky to have had teachers that shaped our consciousness, as I did, teachers who taught me about care, it's a very vital word. It's as strong as that other four-letter word called love. And when care comes through your system, everything is achievable. So having teachers that understood that, and teachers that directed me into a social justice environment, made me read books by John Steinbeck, made me read books by, you know, um, John Dos Passos, made me understand that the great writers the social writers of the 30s were also some of the great journalists who weren't being overpaid and talking about what movie star wore on the Oscars. They were, they were tenacious about the injustices of, the, of what they were seeing, whether they were the farmers or whether there was industry. They wrote it as it was. They were rabble rousers. They were myth breakers. They said it as it was. I was fed on that as a child. And when I got a scholarship to study in Israel, I got my first experience of community. Community that is linked to the land. Understanding that what a community is, how it knows better than anybody. More than the state, more than the government, how to protect each other. So it isn't any one Oh, I'm falling in love at a really early age with Joan of Arc. And she was a Christian saint that was fierce. She was a saint of non-conformity. She wore men's clothes. She had short hair and I had curly hair and I wanted to have short hair like she had. She was fierce. So I read everything about her. So these were the aspects of shaping my identity. When I was 10 years old, my father died. The same week my father died, I opened up a book. It was the first paperback books in England in the early 50s. And it was the whole photographic evidence of the Holocaust, of Auschwitz. And that sort of kick-started me into passion, feeling alive, sense of empathy with the human condition. So it's no wonder that when I went on to a business stage, years and years later, I was going to do something different. And when I look back at business in my last 28 years, and I look at this, this 